Uh-huh, I sure will. Good morning, everybody. You are listening to The Voice. Come on, dig me now. One and only Steve Harvey. Man, oh man, got a radio show. Yeah, I do. God's so big to me, man. I just have to tell you about it. I can't help it. It's rather obvious to me how big, how good God is. He's absolutely tremendous. He's off the chain. You know, man, uh, I wanted to share something with you today. You know, uh, if you're out there, start your mission today. Why don't we all decide together? Better yet, let's just kill that because you don't. Just individually. Look, you listening. Everybody's got something that's that's on the table that they haven't yet attacked yet. What are you waiting for? Start your mission today. Stop the procrastination now. And if you and if you allow plastic, uh, excuse me, and if you allow procrastination to set in, then that 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 allows then, which is a weakness, you know, but that allows the devil then to just really do his thing because an idle mind is the devil's playground. So if you ain't working on your goals, dreams, aspirations, or visions, you just uh, you just waking up seeing how today going to go or the devil, he got plenty for it for you to do. See, but if you get your mind right on your goal and your focus and your purpose, then you can go on about your business. Then when the distraction comes, you can catch yourself. Now, that don't mean you ain't going to fall privy or fall prey to some of your distractions because you will. But you will have a goal in mind, an aspiration that makes you go, hold on, man. I got to stay focused here because what I really want, where I'm really trying to go, the thing that I'm really after, this new little uh thing that's being introduced, this don't fit into the equation. Man, let me keep it moving. Or you may step off the line for a little while. You know, like I said yesterday, the thing about God is he's so forgiving that if you get out of line, he'll hold your place. See, that's the real cool thing. A lot of people will do that for you, too. Like I said, if you're at the movie theater or you're at the amusement park and you're in a line and you forget something, if you politely ask the person behind you, hey, man, I got to run to my car, left something, would you hold my place? Most people will say, fine, yeah, go ahead. And when you come back, they don't have a problem. See, your problem is is you want to get out the line, go do something, then come back and just get up in the line further up than you were or cut somebody. Now you got a problem because, see, everybody looking at you now like, oh, whoa, partner, where you come from? You know, the line start back here. But, see, the thing with God is God don't do that. God don't say the line start back here. God holds your place. When you make a mistake and you fall off the line, God holds your place. But if you ain't got no dreams, aspiration, if you ain't got no place, what he holding for you? 
See, I mean, he, he got a place for you, but you got to come to him. See, some people, if well, here, here's what I'm saying. If you got a goal, an aspiration, a dream, and you fall off track momentarily, you can get back to that. Because God know where you left off. Now, you may have to accomplish a few more things since you stopped for a long period of time, but God know where you left off. You can get back on track. I Look, man, this dream of being on TV since I was a kid, it got off track now. It got off track. I just kept it as one of the dreams. And in some real dark moments when it looked like it wasn't going to happen, all I was hanging on to was just to hope that one day it could. But that's what faith is really about. Faith is the belief in things that you cannot see. But faith gives you the confidence to keep hoping, man. Sometimes it just keep hope alive. Sometimes, you heard Jesse Jackson say it, just keep hope alive. Sometimes, man, it's just the hope. I was hanging on the hope. And I'm talking about when it got real ugly and funky out there for me, when it looked like I wasn't going to ever make it. And all of the facts was in and everything pointed in the direction you're not going to make it. You done really messed up this time. Then I sat there and I just hung on to the hope. But man, that's what I'm saying. If you got a dream or an aspiration or vision or something, when you fall off track and you want to go get back in line, God holds your place. He knew I was off track and out of line, but he said, okay, here's where we stopped. You want to be on TV. Now, when you get it together and you quit tripping and you come and you turn to me, I'm going to hold your place, put you back in line, then we're going to finish the journey. That took me a lot longer to get here than I wanted to, but then it was necessary because I needed all of them mishaps to happen to me along the way. So when I got on the radio one day, which I did not see coming, Steve Harvey got a radio show, y'all. That's why I say it every day. See, because of this radio show that I didn't see coming, now I have stories to tell. And I can tell you about me better than I can tell you about anybody. And I done been through enough where it's relatable, where enough people can go, man, that happened to me. Appreciate you saying that. That's what it was for. See, I get it now. See, at the time, though, I didn't, I didn't like what was happening to me. At the time, I was really in total disagreement with God on a lot of stuff he was pulling off on me. But in essence, I was really pulling it off on myself. But through his grace and mercy, he kept me through all of my mistakes, all my bad decisions, all my miscalculations, all my misfires, all the times I knowingly stepped out there and did wrong. He forgave me. He said, because, man, if you ever come to me, I have a plan for you that is going to be far and above. It will supersede everything you've ever dreamed of. That's what I did. I just got sick of me, good and sick of me, and I turned it over to God, and then God started working, and here I am today. Now, is he through with me yet? Nope. Have I arrived yet? Nope. But guess what? The journey is cool. And then you know what I found out? That's kind of what it's like in life. If you done walked off the cliff in life and you ain't got no God in your life, it's like not having a parachute. You step off the cliff and you just free falling. We all, now that fall gets you closer to the grave, right? See, we all heading to the grave from the moment we're born. But the cool thing about a relationship with God is when you step off the cliff and you got God, he a parachute. You still going down, but it's a nice ride. You guide and you glide and you softly, you enjoying, you look around, you smile, and you're meeting other people along the way. You, you, you're floating over here to ski a little while. You're over there at the beach for a little while. You mess around over here. You get to go out the country a little bit on your parachute and all that. And God just helps your, your descent appear more like a rise and more like a euphoric fall. Instead of not having no God in your life and you just walking off that cliff every day, free falling, ain't got no cord, you steady pulling, ah, you hollering the whole way because you done messed around with yourself and ain't let God come into your life and provide a parachute for you. I would rather have a parachute since I got to jump every day than to not have one. God has been like a parachute for me. Ask me where, I, where that came from, I can't tell you. 
But like I always say, most good things that happen in my life that I can't explain, it's usually him. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, may I have your attention, please? Uh, I'm talking to everyone who has ever, ever in your life wanted to be happy or has ever in your life wanted to smile. I'm only talking to those two groups. Let me have your undivided attention. We finna make you happy, and we finna make you smile. Damn it, this the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Hey, Shirley. Hey, Steve. (laughs) Hey, Carla. Hey, Steve, what's up? Big Junior. Morning, um, I'm sitting around here smiling. (laughs) Thomas Miles. Doggy dog, smiling, ear to ear, Uh, yes I am. EP and star of Ready to Love. There you go. On own. Make no mistake about that. And I'm saying it with so much pride today because I never thought this boy was going to mount to nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Look at God. <laughs> what God can do. This is prayer, y'all. That is work. My nephew is prayer. <laughs> he will work it out. You talking about prayer? Prayer what? works? <laughs> yeah. But, but yeah. strong prayer, though. Uh-huh. Real I'm t- strong. Hey, right. did y'all see the post that I put up on... Uh, on Instagram Which one? today. Yesterday. <laughs> yesterday. Oh, yesterday. I am Steve Harvey. Yours? I am Steve Harvey. Yeah, I only got one. Yours? Yeah, hmm. mine. I just asked. What is I'm telling you to look on somebody else's phone? <laughs> what, say what? that. Say that again. What you got just it. said. What is Jesus. I'm asking you <laughs> to look on somebody else's phone? <laughs> See, that's what scares me right there. Don't what scaring you about? Okay, well, what it, what is it? <laughs> is it the one about God is about to put your name? My Instagram, Steve Harvey. See what? I'm looking on Steve Harvey FM. And see why I asked. Okay, so <laughs> that's the radio. <laughs> the devil saw me with my I head I am down. Steve Harvey. Thank you, Junior. That's okay. Yeah, man. That's okay. That's oh, okay. You're just trying me, this by people. Yeah. That's what the devil do. Yeah. But why you know, are you yelling I'm about it, though, to, Steve. I'm going to your room. We're on radio, okay? <laughs> well, you know, I ain't, I ain't, ever, I ain't sent you to that in. one. <laughs> And you calm it down, sir. Yeah, see, <laughs> yeah, that's that's a great statement. That that's, it don't matter. It's okay. <laughs> no, he's well, mad. Can y'all read it so Whatever. I can hear? Since we done fought through it, let, let me hear. It. Sorry, Junior. I appreciate it, man. <laughs> we can't bring it back. We can't go back. We can't. Nah, <laughs> uh-uh, not on this show. Not for this show. Let's go to the here here we're just gonna wrap this up and go to the thirty-two break. What's the quote? <laughs> yeah, don't worry about it. You can't read. What are you mad? For. You got a college degree. Jesus. I'm not looking at it. That's what I'm saying. Let me let me hear. Oh, oh. Don't get your phone okay. and look at it then. Hell no. Life. Why don't well, you just don't go to people, break, Shirley? Don't the people listening want to hear? Yeah, just no. Every, to go to the Instagram. What? <laughs> <laughs> I am Steve Harvey. That's the hell I am. <sighs> Oh, Lord. Naturally, I would go to the radio one first. All right, coming. Okay, well, listen to this. Maybe this will make you smile. Coming up at 32 after the hour. I know. Let's. (laughs) We're gonna start the show off (laughs) with something funny. Okay, (laughs) Sister Odell in the building. When we come back, inside of something funny, right after this. This is Neo, and you are locked into the best morning show on radio. You know I'm talking about Steve Harvey Morning Show. Keep it locked right here. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, ladies and gentlemen, she's back, and she's better than ever. She is here. Sister Odell. Me, me, me. Uh, uh, uh. D- did she say me, me, me in the background? Jesus, Jesus, Lord, Lord. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. My Lord. Hey! Mm. It just hit me. It just hit me. Uh-huh, the spirit. Girl, just, <laughs> girl, just I, mm. 
Yeah. Mm. Jesus. I know that's right. Mm. Good, mm. good morning, everyone. Ooh. Good morning, Good morning, Sister Odell. Odell. Hey, Junior. Good morning, Sister Odell. How you doing? Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Hello, Carly. Hey, Sister Odell. How you doing today? Girl, girl, girl. You know I'm all right today. Hey, boy. Hey, Sister That's Odell. Good. How you doing? Mm-hmm. How's Kate? Boy, though, huh? He's fine. Could you, you, could you just... Wait a minute, wait a minute. Now, I've been calling you boy for years now, and all of a sudden you got a problem with it. you always be a boy to me. I'm, um... Okay, could it be Tommy or Thomas? You know, I'm, you How know, I'm you different. How you want? I just I've been calling you boy. You ain't saying nothing. Why is you tripping now? Yeah, but I got now? a I got a I got a, a bigger Wife. following now. I got a TV show, so I kind of want. You know, well, you ain't got moments. no hype. What you want? <laughs> <laughs> You're the size of a boy. <laughs> See now you want to get technical. Okay, okay. no, I'm, I'll, I'll be all right. Don't worry about. It. Hello, Shirley. Hello, Sister Odell. Welcome back again. Thank you, thank mm-hmm. you, thank you. How's uh uh Aurelio? <laughs> Ernesto <laughs> is just fine. Thank you, Sister Odell. Beautiful, beautiful, mm-hmm. beautiful. Thank I'm you, happy sir. for y'all. Thank you. You know, I, I appreciate am. that. What's going on today, y'all? Anything? Well, it's so much stuff going on, ah. Sister Odell. I mean, so much. Um. Ah. Well, oh, some, jeez, oh, I don't even know if I should say this. Because Girl, what are you about you to say? You know how you get upset, Sister hey. Odell. And uh, what I you just, about to say? well, I mean, oh, I, I don't know. Um, oh, he oh. just needs your prayers. He just needs your prayers. Who? Um, the oh, Jeopardy host, oh. Alex Trebek. He just needs your prayers. That's all. He just need prayers? Yes, just your prayers. That's all. Okay, well, I praise for people. Okay, Alex Trebek, thank you. I'm, I'm glad. I, I didn't want to make you sad or anything, but okay, it well, you know, my mind. Uh, you know, you, that wasn't you nothing know else that? crossing your mind? Not at that moment when you asked. Because, you know, you got to be careful when you start announcing people. You I, write some off quicker than, I know, you I know. know. <laughs> I know. That's why I was very careful. Next very thing, you know, careful. you scared me for a minute. <laughs> me too. I scared myself. Because, you know. <sighs> anyway. Um, oh, my goodness. <laughs> just thought I'd remind you of it. Well, oh, my you. goodness. And what you talking about for me, for Junior? Mm-hmm. <laughs> She's the one said it. Who are you looking for in the uh, in the presidential race, uh, Sister O'Dell? You know, I don't know who's going to win this thing. You mean for the Democrats? Yes, for the Democrats. You know, I'm so confused. Mm-hmm. I want to believe in some of them. Uh, I, I like Cory, Cory Booker. Cory Booker out of New Jersey. Mm-hmm. You know. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. But I don't know what he going to do because he, he just looks just a wide-eyed, just a crazy sometimes. <laughs> Now, Cory Booker have his eyes. His eyes just be just as big. I think he finna do something. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know what he finna do. He scare me sometimes. I look at Cory Booker. I say, Lord Jesus, you give him a butcher knife, we all be in trouble. <laughs> no. Uh, There's something wrong with all of them. You know what I mean? Just go down the list and I call their names out. Okay. Uh, Joe Biden. Uh, Joe Biden. Former VP. He, he, he can talk good for about 30 minutes. Then after that, Joe just starts slipping. <laughs> Bernie Sanders. Oh, you know him? But I, I know I knew his daddy. Oh. Mm. Who? Mm-hmm. Who, who? Bentley Biden. <laughs> Bentley Biden. Yeah, Bentley Biden. I knew him. And then who else is running? Well, uh, I was going to say Bernie Sanders. Bernie, Bernie Sanders. Sanders. Uh-huh. You know, I already know. I'm scared to vote for him because we the same age. <laughs> oh. Oh, oh you've never that. told you us just... your age, Sister Odell. <laughs> Bernie well, Sanders. I'm 111. <laughs> well, Bernie's wow. not quite that Easily. old. I, I you don't little... think? You don't think? He's in the 70s, I thought. Take a close look. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody up there look older than Bernie? Nope. <laughs> no, no. Thank no. you. Who uh, else is running? Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris. You know, I like her. Senator. You know, she's jazzy. I kind of like Kamala. So, you know, mm-hmm. you know yeah. I kind of like her. Now you know yeah, who's women really, empowerment. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, who's really going up in the polls is mm-hmm. uh Senator Elizabeth Warren. She's getting a mm-hmm. lot of momentum behind her. Mm-hmm. She mm-hmm. is. Yes, she yeah. is. She's moving up. She had a rally in mm-hmm. New York and all that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't care Another for her. woman. You don't care I for don't her? care for her. Yeah, we was uh dating the same man once upon a time. Oh, who who uh, was that? Not, not a boo beef. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what this is. A a boo beef. <laughs> 
sick of her. <laughs> Half I thought I wasn't going to recognize her, going to cut her hair short. I remember when the hell I had long hair. Well, Sister Odell, if she becomes the Democratic nominee, don't let that stand in, in the way of your vote. Please. If you think I'm voting for somebody who slept with the same man I slept with, you got the wrong voter. <laughs> I tell you that right now. This ain't trick or treat. Lay that aside, lay this that ain't aside. trick or treat, sweetie. <laughs> no, you a... must. You better. You you must ask about somebody about me. Cause we not finna do this. Here. You not finna sleep with my man and then get a vote for me. What? Yeah. Okay. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna try to find out what poll she going to if she get the nomination. Oh my goodness. Yeah, she gonna open up goodness. the curtain and surprise. I'm gonna be back there. <laughs> Vote for this. Get this right. cane in your eye. <laughs> wow. Oh, All right. Um, Sister Odell, we this love you. Um, I ain't never forgave her for that. She's going to try to cut see. her hair off like I don't recognize her. Well, she's got a plan for that, I bet you. Uh, she got a plan up- for what? Uh-huh. For me? Your, to get your vote. Yeah, to get your vote. She better step off. Uh, coming up next, thank you, Sister Odell. She coming, don't know who she playing with. The nephew is coming up with Run That Prank Back huh. right after Got this. something for me. I want to see it. A plan for everything. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour in entertainment news, uh, we're sending up prayers of healing for Jeopardy host Alex Trebek. Uh, He revealed uh, that he has a setback in his fight for uh, pancreatic cancer. Uh, We'll talk about that. Plus, in trending news, Mm. we'll tell you about a Texas judge who denied a motion to move the trial of an ex-Dallas cop who killed a man in his apartment last year. We'll also talk about all these stories at the hour Hmm. coming up uh, right now. Can I ask you a question? Uh Uh-huh. Kind of crazy question today. Yeah, I got an attitude with Elizabeth Warren. <laughs> I told her I have a surprise for her. you. Gonna tell me she got a plan for me for who? <laughs> See, I'm a when you're 111, you can afford to be edge. Oh, okay. It's when you're young like Tommy is. How old is you now, Thomas? Uh, we won't reveal that. Um, oh, you think because you'd have lost that weight and got a little flat stomach and you're on TV, you ain't supposed to tell your age no more? Your ass <laughs> is 50. <laughs> 52 to be exact. I'm done. Yeah, Here's nah, the cake see, You lady ain't want right to tell here. your age because you done got one little damn show. Now you ready for love. Now you think one of them going to be ready to love you? You're too old for that. <laughs> here is the cake lady. Run that He has cake. a wonderful wife, too. Cake, this is Barbara. Uh, yeah, I need to ask you, what, what kind of cakes do y'all make at this place? Well, sir, we make all occasion cakes. Birthday cakes, anniversary cakes, wedding cakes. Pretty much whatever you need. What you looking for? Do y'all be making adult cakes? Yes, sir. We make a few adult cakes. You know, uh, bachelorette parties and, uh, you know, weddings. What exactly are you looking for, sir? No, no, no. The problem is, is this right here. I ordered a cake from you all on Saturday. Uh-huh. Now, it was supposed to be delivered to my daughter's school on Tuesday. And, you know, she in junior high school, 13 years old. The cake was supposed to have Hannah Montana on it. And it was supposed to say, happy birthday, now, the cake get delivered over there today, and I can't for the life of me believe that this has happened. We in her classroom, all the classmates is in there, some teachers in there, the principal then came down. We finna have cake and ice cream for the kids, but when they open up the cake, it's a man's private part on the cake. What? Oh, no, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No. We have never made a mistake like that. Y'all now, made that mistake. Y'all made that stuff. mistake. I've been calling this place all damn day. Y'all done made this damn mistake, and somebody gonna pay for this. I got we thirteen. Did not make that mistake. Yeah, I got thirteen year old kids. Sir. No, you gonna have to lower it down now, okay? Because we can't get nothing settled if you yelling and I can't hear you, okay? I need to lower that. You should have lowered that private part off that cake. That's sir, what you should have done. Sir, what is your name? My name is Trevor. And now, where was the cake supposed to be going? Middle school. Middle school. Now, where was it delivered, sir? I just don't see that's this it right there. You can't remember. That's how y'all made the damn mistake. Sir, please just answer the question so we can get this settled, sir. No, what who is the owner there? Excuse me, I am the owner. My name is Barbara. Now, if you give me the information, I'll try to make this thing right because it couldn't have been my company. Are you absolutely sure, sir? 
I'm positive. Y'all is the ones that delivered the damn case. Listen, I got all these 13 year old kids and they're traumatized, and the, the teachers and the oh, oh, okay, okay, are looking sir. at me crazy. I, I, because I y'all didn't deliver sir, the wrong I damn case. Understand, sir, but I need you to calm down just for a minute. Let me ask you this. Wait, wait, wait. I, you want me to calm down? You should have took that private part down I, I off the case. I can understand. I can understand, but I don't think it was my company, okay? Because we've never made a mistake like that. Now, we're very careful with that kind of stuff. Now, sir, hold on one minute. Come here. Do you know anything about a cake delivery, a Hannah Montana cake, going to middle school today? Uh huh. Yeah, did y'all make any deliveries? Okay, thanks. Sir, I just talked to my driver, and he's been with me about eight years, sir, and we've never had a problem like this. He's never delivered a cake over there, sir. Are you sure it was my company? This damn show this place, lady. It's this place. Your driver lying. Uh, you, know, you know, mistakes can be made, but... I cannot. You can't make no mistake like that when you got a man's private part in a uh, in front of a bunch of thirteen year old kids at a junior high school. I can understand. I would be upset too. I have children too, so I can understand what you're trying to say. But sir, what I'm trying to tell you is this is not my company. You're talking about. We wouldn't have done anything like that. I've been in business for thirteen years. What is your name? My name is Barbara. Okay. So you're the one behind all of this on this damn cake. It's supposed to be Hannah Montana and wind up being a man's private part on the cake. Sir, come on, uh, stop and think about this. You know, you think we would about not it. deliver a cake to, to a about... high school, an adult cake to a school. Now, I, I understand you upset. Listen, I la- really lady, do you understand you what has happened at my daughter's school? I, and I apologize for it, sir, but I don't believe that you ordered the cake from my company, okay? As a matter of fact, we make cakes on Friday, sir. Wasn't no cake delivered today. Sir, it's a Tuesday. Hey, what the hell? I mean, it's a Tuesday. Ain't nobody eating cake on Tuesday? Sir, I have told you. That that couldn't have happened here at my company. Okay. 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 Now, Let me I tell don't know. you. Okay. I mean, I'll be happy to make a cake for you, sir, and to send it to your daughter. But, sir, it wasn't my company. That I don't want no happened. more damn cakes. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you what I'm finna to do, lady. I'm finna call my lawyer. I'm finna to get with the police, and I'm coming over there to shut that <laughs> down. You won't sell a cupcake when I get through with your. Oh, sir. You know what? Now you done gone too far. Let me tell you something. This is my business that I done worked for 13 years to build. You ain't finna come up in here and do a I'm thing. finna shut that down. You come up I'm here and find more down. icing up your Your mammy won't even know who you are. You need to get off my phone with this That's some ignorant in the first place, sir. How dare you call me with that And what the is your name? I already told you my name is Trevor. Well, that... Trevor, bring your up here and I got something for you. Bring your and the police. Do you think I'm going to let some little like you come jeopardize my business? I've been in business too long. I know what the I'm doing. Now, I don't know who the you call, but it will show not my company. Do you understand me? I understand everything you saying, and I understand when I get over there, I'm going to shut it down, me and the police. You won't come out here and get your set down, and you're going to have a daughter crying over your Now, I done told you what my company. Now, get off my phone. Do you hear me? I got one more thing I need to you say ain't to got you, lady. A it's thing to tell me talking about shutting down my company. Yes, I, I got one more thing. Is you listening to me? I ain't listening. What you got to say to me? This is nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You just got pranked by your girlfriend. That. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, y'all son of I gotta get off this phone. Oh my God! I'm a killer! I'm a killer! <laughs> Bye. Hello. <laughs> oh my God! Oh my God! Please tell me I'm not on the radio. No. <laughs> oh jeez. You ain't on the radio now, but you're gonna be on there in the morning. Oh Lord, no, no, my preacher, everybody else gonna be on it. Oh my God! I'm gonna kill it. <laughs> I'm gonna kill it. I'm gonna get me a cake and go to her job and up. <laughs> Lord, oh Lord, y'all gonna get somebody. Stop playing like that, you know? Ugh. She gonna have to look out every day. She ain't gonna never where it's coming from. I'm gonna be like the thief in the night on her. <laughs> <laughs> hey. oh. Miss Barbara, I gotta ask you one more thing. What is, what is the baddest, I'm talking about the baddest radio show in the land? Steve Harvey Morning Show. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all the what? Hey, can you make a, can you make a socket to me cake? Yeah, I can make a socket to your cake, but you better hope it ain't got a gun in it. Y'all don't mess around and get 
around this with somebody like that. They business now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you, nephew. Coming up at the top of the hour, entertainment and national news right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Some sad news. Uh, Jeopardy host Alex Trebek says he's undergoing chemotherapy again. This is after a setback in his battle with pancreatic cancer. During an interview with ABC's Good Morning America on Tuesday, Alex said that uh, after a short period of optimism when he stopped chemotherapy, his medical report didn't look good and doctors ordered him back on the treatment. Alex announced back in March that he had uh, stage four pancreatic cancer. We are all still praying for Alex Trebek, still praying and still being optimistic. Absolutely. That's right. Mm-hmm. Prayer mm-hmm. wars. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Prayer of healing. Yeah. Mm. <sighs> he has a great attitude, too. He and he Jay. He got a good spirit. Yeah. Like Jay. You he know? and he got Jay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's, how you, yeah. that's how you do it. Yeah. That's how you beat yep. it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he said he asked for everybody's prayers, too. Yeah. He I said, I that. need them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Prayers going up for Alex Trebek. In other trending news, um, a Texas judge has denied a motion by fired Dallas cop Amber Geiger to move her trial out of Dallas, rejecting her claims that the media's hysteria and false narratives uh, have prejudiced potential jurors in her trial for the shooting death of an unarmed black man in his own apartment. Dallas County District uh, Judge Tammy Kemp reportedly told jurors to pack one week's worth of clothing in case they are to be sequestered. Uh, the murder trial is expected to last up to three weeks and will begin next Monday. Amber Geiger, 30, shot and killed uh, Botham Jean, Botham Jean, 26. He was an accountant. He was in his own apartment at the Southside Flats apartment complex just south of downtown Dallas on September 7th of, of last year. Geiger said she thought she had entered her own apartment and fired her service revolver at what she believed was an intruder. Uh, Geiger has been charged with murder and faces up to life in state prison if convicted. It, I, mm. Just, you know, it's, this is such an, it's such an impossible story to believe that you yes. thought that you mm-hmm. were entering your own apartment when you were entering his apartment. Mm-hmm. You sense. killed mm-hmm. the man and now yeah. you want what? Change a venue for yeah. the trial. Move the trial. No, the media's what, being unfair. No, there, there's no unfair, nothing. This is what happened. Yeah. This right. man's life is gone because you, as a trained officer, mm-hmm. thought you were entering your house and he was an intruder when, in essence, you he opened the door to his own home and you killed him. Are you kidding me? And don't you know your own house when you open the door? Man, miss me. Miss me. You ain't seen nothing in the background look like yours. None. Yeah. Right. Nothing. No, man. Yeah, denied denied it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) So. That's good. Yeah. Next Monday, the trial trial starts. Next Monday, Mm -hmm. that's right. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. We'll be keeping you posted on this one. I, I, want, I want to see how they try to paint this man. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I want, he was what, an upstanding was an member of his community and everything, if I if, yeah. if I remember correctly. Yeah. All right, Steve, uh, we got to move on here. Let's get ladies to and gentlemen. Headline. Without further ado, Miss Ann Tripp. Thank you very, very much. This is Antrip with the news. By the way, there was never any word of any uh, breathalyzer test given uh, to Officer Geiger by her colleagues. Officials in Saudi Arabia are saying that they're sure that Iranian weapons were used in the recent attack on their oil refinery. Meanwhile, President Trump's hedging a bit, just a bit. It's looking that way. We'll have some pretty good, uh, we're having some very strong studies done, but it's certainly looking that way at this moment. And uh, we'll let you know. Iran continues to deny the accusation, though many U.S. lawmakers are wary of there being 
a mini military action. They don't want to see that. Former Trump campaign manager Corey Lewandowski was on Capitol Hill yesterday, appearing under subpoena before the House Judiciary Committee. And the Democrats who head up the panel wanted him to describe an episode involving possible obstruction of justice by President Trump, a situation described in the Mueller report, as a matter of fact. The report said that in June of 2017, Trump asked Lewandowski to deliver a message to U.S. Attorney Jeff Sessions, telling Sessions to cut off the Russia investigation. Uh, But Lewandowski says he never delivered the note. And after the hearing, after admitting that that was true, Lewandowski flatly and defensively refused to talk about anything else. For actual collusion or conspiracy, there was none. What there has been, however, is harassment of this president from the day he won the election. He cited executive privilege as his reason for refusing to answer. However, Democrats disagree with that excuse since Lewandowski was never part of the administration. He was never employed by the White House. In Chicago, opening arguments have been made in the trial of two men accused of luring a nine-year-old little boy away from a playground and shooting him to death as a way of sending a message to his father, who was a rival gang member. Corey Morgan and Dwight Dottie on trial for murdering the fourth grader, Tyshawn Lee, while a third man, Kevin Edwards, has put guilty before the trial. Authorities say young Tyshawn was murdered in revenge for the killing weeks earlier of one of his father's gang rivals and the wounding of that man's mother. Tributes continue to pour in on social media for Emmy Award-winning political journalist Cokie Roberts of both ABC TV and National Public Radio. Cokie died yesterday after losing a battle against breast cancer. She was 75. Former President Obama and former First Lady Michelle Obama have issued a statement describing Cokie Roberts as a trailblazing figure and a role model for young women, saying that she will be missed. Kevin Hart, well, he's in it again. He's facing a $60 million lawsuit brought by an actress and model named Monique Monita Sabag, who accuses Hart of negligence and infliction of emotional distress and invasion of privacy, all stemming from an incident that took place in 2017. A USA Today says Sabag made headlines after a video surfaced online of she and Hart having sex in a Vegas hotel room. You may remember all of that. Well, Sabag said initially that she just wanted to find a guy that initially illegally taped them and sue him. His name is uh, Jonathan uh, Todd Jackson. But now Sabag is suing Jackson. She's suing Kevin and heart and she's suing the Marriott Hotel. Finally, this is National Respect Day and we do You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Ladies and gentlemen, uh he's back. One of our favorite yeah. Favorite family members. Woo! He's the star of Come ESPN's on, First Take mm-hmm. uh, and the Stephen A. Smith Show on ESPN Radio. He's also the brand ambassador for the third annual HBCU Week right. uh, that's going on mm. this week to promote awareness about the importance of HBCUs, historical black colleges and universities. He's here today, and before he talks about this wonderful initiative with the HBCUs, ladies and gentlemen, Stephen A. Smith was talking yesterday about them damn Browns. He hurt me, and I wanted to text him about it because I text him live on the show a lot. But he was telling the truth. And Stephen A., you, the damn Browns, your take on the Browns quickly is what? Man, they got skills. They can ball. But I'm just saying you ain't been to the postseason since 2002. Uh, you, you, you've stunk up the joint. Damn, damn it, you stunk up Lake Erie for the last two decades. All right? Tell the truth, Stephen A. You finally up, got a team. And before y'all have a chance to pass gas, everybody <laughs> crowning you like you done something. I'm like, wait a damn minute. You ain't beat nobody last year. Cam Newton was hurt. Denver didn't have a quarterback. Don't get me started with six. Cincinnati and Marvin Lewis and all of that other stuff who you beat twice. I mean, you're talking all of this stuff, and I'm just in the mindset like, wait a minute. And then last night, yeah, you showed out on Monday Night Football. It was against the Jets. I mean, they got a quarterback. <laughs> I mean, Sam Donald is out with Mono. Well. And, and then your backup quarterback, Trevor Simeon, got his ankle broke in the first quarter. You got some dude named Luke Falk. Steve, I cover sports. <laughs> The Steve Harvey team, I cover sports. Yes, you for do. For a living. Yes. And I yes, never heard of do. this dude. I don't know what school he went to. Yeah. I don't know what the hell he's doing on the Jets roster. I ain't never heard of him in my life. Yeah. And, 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 this, and this is who the Browns beat. Yeah. 
Yeah, ain't that Everybody damn Everybody walking around like it's something special. People need to sit down, man. Well, Let you know, play. Sam, Let hey, hey, Sam first. Donaldson, stop kissing everybody. He wouldn't have mono. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can say you can say that, but 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 we don't we don't know if well, we that don't. was the reason. We don't know. Well, we don't anyway, know. let me just say this, Stephen, on behalf of the one real uh, Cleveland fan out here on this radio show. Mm-hmm. It wasn't. I hadn't crowned the Browns. I was just hopeful that this year would be different from other years. I just wanted to win ten games this year. Oh, you might, you might, yeah. but I got news for you. The Baltimore Ravens, led by that brother, Lamar Jackson. Who is my favorite football Ooh, player Lord in the league right now. Lord yeah. have mercy. This brother is special now. Yeah. And John Harbaugh and those boys got him balling. They got a, st- a tough, stout defense. Baltimore ain't going anywhere, man. Pittsburgh's done. It's over. Yeah. Yeah. Big Ben Roethlisberger wow. is injured. He's out for the year. It's over for the Steelers. They're done. All right? And don't get me started with Cincinnati. But it's going to come down to Baltimore and Cleveland. And I would give Thank Baltimore you, the edge right now. Hey, uh, Stephen A., hold on one second, man. Uh, We're going to take a break, and we'll be right back. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Hey, uh, everybody, we're back. Uh, We're talking to uh, Stephen A. Smith about this uh, exciting new initiative and he's the ambassador for HBCU College Fair in Wilmington, Delaware. Hey, Stephen, thank you so much, man. Let's talk about the real reason you're calling, man. This is a big weekend for HBCUs to promote student enrollment. Uh, you're going to be broadcasting Easy ESPN's first take. This is big, man. Live from the big HBCU College uh, Fair in Wilmington, Delaware this Friday. Magic Johnson going to be a special guest. Doors open at 7 a.m. and the broadcast begins at 10 a.m. Tell us about it, Steve. Well, well, first of all, you know, people like yourself and uh, your, your man Rashawn McDonald, the whole Steve Harvey morning team, I got y'all to thank because with all the things that y'all have done throughout the years with the Disney Dreamers Academy, just, just, just reminding us of the importance of giving back the way that you've continuously done throughout the years, Steve, um, is something that I tried to do. Um, you know, I'm a graduate of an HBCU at Winston-Salem State. I played for the legendary Clarence Big House Games. Um, and one of the wow. promises I made uh, was to make sure that I gave back. He said, damn it, boy, that's the least you could do because you damn sure couldn't play when you were here. And he's right. <laughs> so, so, you know, I said it's the least I could do. And so, obviously, I've been blessed and very, very fortunate uh, to be as successful as I've been uh, over the course of the last several years. I've given, you know, I've pledged to give in excess of a quarter of a million dollars to my wow. alma mater, my Myself, on, I've, been, I've been doing that, and yes. now I'm just trying to take it to another level. HBCU Week is their third annual at Delaware State. They've got the mayor involved, Mayor Prosecki. They've got the governor involved, Governor John Carney. Both U.S. senators were in attendance months ago when they honored me as an HBCU grad. The co-founders of the event by the name of Earl Cooper and Ashley Christopher were the ones that put this together. And the objective is to really get folks from disenfranchised communities, particularly African Americans, more in tune and involved with HBCUs. HBCUs, it's like 3% of folks graduate from HBCUs, but they make up uh, more than 30 to 40% uh, of black entrepreneurs, black professionals in corporate America and what have you with the things that they've been doing. And so as a graduate of an HBCU, recognizing culturally the kind of connections that you're able to build, the family kind of atmosphere that you're in, the fact that you've got people around you who you identify with culturally, ethnically, and beyond, helping to lift you up and propel you to new heights is something that we're not accustomed to seeing unless we go uh, to an HBCU in most wow. instances. So as a result of that, they wanted me to be the ambassador of it because obviously the face that I have and the reach that I have, being on ESPN, reaching over 75 million people a week with the platforms that I have available to me, I got ESPN to take first take down to HBCU. We televised live from there. Magic Johnson is going to be a guest. So is Troy Vincent, the executive VP of the National Football League. They've been doing their work in order to get HBCU grads to be involved in sports management and what have you. So I got the corporate side with uh, Troy Vincent. I got the entrepreneurial side with Magic Johnson. I've got the media side with myself. And and basically, you've got marching bands that are coming in attendance, 25 different schools from Winston-Salem State, my 
my alma mater to Morehouse, Spelman, Norfolk State. Uh, the list just goes on and on and on. And if you're a high school senior and you show up with your grades and the proper SAT, ACT scores, you could get a scholarship on the spot, not to mention enrollment in an HBCU, in an HBCU uh, for a number of people Wait, that are Stephen going to a. be in attendance. So that's what I'm doing. Stephen A., this is, so you're saying it's that amazing. if a high school student shows up, with his diploma, his transcripts, yep. that they're giving away scholarships. Now, I'm I'm looking here, yes, and it says that if you it, it, if you attend, there's over four thousand students expected to attend. Yep, and the plan is to award over two million dollars on site yes. in scholarships yes. on site. Nice. Stephen A. You better that's, go to work, boy. That's, that's, that's yes. what we're doing. That's what I'm, that's what I, and this is just the beginning for me. Well, Stephen you are. A. And Stephen A. Smith, oh, man, Stephen congratulations. A. Listen to me, students. Get down there to this fair. Uh, if you want more information, go to uh, HBCU Week, hbcuweek.org. That's just simply hbcuweek.org for a full schedule of events and to register to attend the college fair. Stephen A. Smith, congratulations. Keep Thank doing you. what you're doing, boy. Thank you, man. I appreciate right. the love, everybody. Great, Y'all My you. man. Yeah. Yes, sir. All right, coming up, nephew Tommy and today's prank phone call right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, coming up at the top of the hour, right about four minutes after, it's my strawberry letter for today. Subject, my husband's play daughter. My husband's Mm. play daughter. All Uh right. Yeah, Mm -hmm. right now, Mm -hmm. nephew Tommy in the building with today's prank phone call. What you got for us, (laughs) Neff? (laughs) Cone falls. Cone falls. Your wife Uh is cheating on both of us. (laughs) Oh, Man, it's going to be great. Huh? Boy, you play too much. Your wife <laughs> is cheating on both of us. You better not be crying. Run it for me, cat. Hello? I'm trying to reach Terrence, please. Who's calling? Hey, my name is Mark. My name is Mark. How you doing, brother? I work with um with your wife, Veronica. We're on the same sales floor together. Uh, I think I met you oh. before, but I'm, I don't know if you remember meeting me. But um, I, I work at the job with Veronica. Oh, is there is everything all right there, or what's going on? No, no, no. Everything's straight here on, at the job. No, not a problem at all at the job. But I wanted is to. Is she um, all right, or is everything all right? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. She's all right. She's perfectly fine, man. Um, I just, oh. I just, you know, uh, I, I actually, like I said, my name is Mark, man. You don't remember me, Terrence, but I just wanted to talk to you. Like I say, um, you know, I got some things on that was that's been bothering me for a minute, and I, you know, I just, I just kind of wanted to reach out to you. And you know, just kind of have like a little little heart to heart talk with you, man. So maybe you know, uh, you know, we can get things in a in a in a better position. But I just wanted I I just wanted me and you to have a conversation. Wait a minute, did, how how'd you get my did Veronica give you my number or how did you get my number? That's what I'm trying. To, like, what's going on? Uh, I mean, I had I had I've had your number. I just I just uh, I just hadn't never reached out to you before. Oh. But like I say though, man, this 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 has been bothering me for a minute, and I wanted to get it off my chest so you and I can try to, I guess, fix this whole issue, but I, I just want us to see if we can fix it, you know? Well, what, well, fix the issue? What's the issue? I don't understand. I'm I'm not following you. I don't understand. What, like, what is the issue? So, but now, you know, like I said, I went on and Come got on, the nerve up to get you. Spit it out. Spit it out, brother. Spit it out. Talk to me. What's going on? Okay. Your wife, man, is cheating on both of us. We got to do something about this, man. I, I'm... Did you say she's eating on both of us? What'd you say? I could not even she, she is so cheating. Like up. She is cheating on the both of us, bro. Wait a minute. It sounds like you said cheating. I don't know what you. Ver- Veronica you know is. I mean? Listen to me, Terrence. Veronica is cheating on both of us. You say Veronica's cheating on me? And me. You know, and we got it. We got to figure out what we're going to do, man. But as a husband, I got to. You got to. I'm going to need you to step up and get this thing in order. What you talking about? You say Veronica is cheating on me with you? No, no. She cheating on both of us with somebody else. What you I, mean? I'm, I'm no, I've been noticing her going out with this, uh, you know, going to lunch with this other cat. So I, I'm like, I got pissed off about it. So I said, you know what? I can't take you no Wait more. I'm calling Terrence. Wait, you saying to me that 
my wife has been cheating around the job with somebody else? She cheating on both of us, dude. I don't get what you mean. If my wife is cheating on me and you calling me to tell me that she's cheating on me, I appreciate that. But I don't get what you're saying she's cheating on both of us. Then I don't get that part. I don't understand what you mean. Well, me and Veronica have been, you know, kind of cool, you know, last eight months to a year. We've been, you know, pretty tight here at the job. You know what I'm saying? So, Listen, what you mean y'all been cool? That's what I don't understand. Like, what do you mean y'all been cool? Because that's my wife. Tell me what you're talking about. You okay, know all I'm saying you know is me, like? me, me and her been real cool. We've been real tight, you know. Sometimes we, we take lunch and then, you know, don't come back. That's our thing, though. But, you know, now, you know, I'm noticing... You know, she she done went out, you know, she done went to lunch a couple of times with this brother named Allen. And I'm like, okay, no, nah, no, nah, it ain't finna go down like this here. You know what I'm saying? Are you f***ing my wife, man? Hey, that's that's not why I called you. I called Are you to you f- my wife. That's what I want to know. I'm telling you about this dude named Allen. I need you to step up as the husband and but, fix this. But you telling me that my wife is cheating on both of us. There ain't no cheating on both of us. If she's cheating, she's cheating on me. You telling me that you're with my wife too? That you've been messing around with my wife? I don't that's not the, what you're saying, brother. Th- that's not the part I'm trying to talk about. I'm trying to talk about this dude named Allen, man. That's what no, I'm trying to get I, out. No, no, we're going to get to Allen. We're going to get to Allen. You saying that my wife, man, it's some crazy shit. Yo, you know what, man? I'm about to put my foot right up your Because I don't what? play those games. She's with her. She's with me. We messing around. We doing this and doing that. It don't work like that. You understand what I'm saying? Dude, I hear what you're saying. But the beef ain't with me. The beef is with Allen. The beef is with you, dog. No, she messing over she messing over both of us with Allen, dog. I'm about to call her on three way because this some right here. I'm telling you. Okay, well hold hold on, bro. I just want you to deal with Allen. Are you at the job right now? I'm at I'm at the job, yeah. I'm about to come put my foot all in your you understand me? No, I I hear you, man. Allen is the one that then blew this thing out of proportion, dog. She messing over me and you with this here. There ain't no me and you. I don't share. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I hear you. I, I, I no, mean, you I, don't I hear me. You don't hear me. I don't share. There ain't no sharing that goes on over here. Okay, okay. Do you follow right. me? I do, I do. I'm just saying, you know. What are you saying? Meet me right that, now. Meet me right now. I'm about to come up here where you at right now. Where are you at? I'm at where the job where, 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 where Ronnie at. I call her Ronnie. I'm at the right. job where you Ronnie at. Where, I call her Ronnie. I call, I call Veronica Ronnie. I mean, that's my little I'm nickname to her. I'm All right, but, but, up there. Well, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Ronnie. Ronnie. Ain't Ronnie. No hold on. You hold on. She right here. One, she's right where? She, she, she's she right, right here. here. Right here. Put you, her on the phone. You wanna, Put her on the phone. Huh? Put her okay. on the phone. Okay, cool, man. Here, cool. But can I tell you what she's saying? I don't want to hear what she's saying. I want her on the phone right now. Okay, but can I tell you what she's telling me to tell you? She ain't telling you to tell me a damn thing. Because the only thing that you're going to be getting is my foot up your Okay, okay. But, 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 but Ronnie want me to tell you this, man. Just listen to me, Terrence. She wants me to tell you that this is nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You just got pranked by your wife, Veronica. <laughs> you know what? I don't play this. I'm going to all y'all up up here, man. I'm going to all y'all up. I'm going to give you an old school ass whooping. Y'all ain't even right for that. You all right, man? I'm no, I'm not all right. I'm in the car. I'm sweating. I was on my way over there. I'm about to go to jail messing around with y'all. <laughs> hey, let me ask you this, man. What is the baddest, and I mean the baddest, radio show in the land? You already know. <laughs> the Steve <Harvey> Morning Show. <laughs> <laughs> that is your wife cheating on both of them. You, you know, play too much. Sometimes you got to bring everything to the table at some point. Okay. <laughs> now I understood what we was doing. Uh-huh. But what you're not going to do is do both of us. Wow. Oh, that's wow. where you draw the line. Now that's he, where I draw the line. He has conditions. And, okay. and what was you doing uh, while she was stepping out? You know, that's you did checking him, Tommy. No. No. <laughs> you can't do me like this, man. It'll hurt my feelings, man. You understand? Ooh. I think I did a good job. I think I did a good <laughs> you job. Always I always think, think I did. that. Well, you yeah. know.
Yeah, because you, the job think is you to, play too much. Yeah, you play I it. know, but the job is to push the envelope. That's all I'm doing. Oh, you Just do that. pushing a little bit. But one day, I'm going to call Uncle Steve and say, they finally got him. <laughs> Junior, if you call <laughs> Uncle Steve and tell him somebody whooped my ass, that means you was there. I- and I just know. watch. I, what am I supposed to do? You, I saw him. <laughs> okay. I, I, I know I better not be getting my ass whooping. Look over and see you watching. I know boy, that better not ever boy, happen. You go look, look over there and I'm talking about falling out. <laughs> I'm talking about you rolling. Wouldn't, you wouldn't help him, Junior. Well, you keep messing with these people. <laughs> people got a right. This, this is 15 years you've been getting these people. <laughs> oh, it's going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> Ah. Greensboro, uh-uh, I, I, I want to hear it. Greensboro, North Carolina, I'm coming to the city this Saturday <laughs> night at the Carolina Theater, and tickets are on sale right now. Get it while the getting is good. Land in the cut is the one and only Salisbury, Maryland. That's right, up to Wacomico. I will be there on October the 5th. Tickets on sale right now. All right, thank you, nephew. Up next, it is the Strawberry Letter subject. My husband's play daughter will get into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, time now for today's Strawberry Letter. And if you need advice on relationships, sex, dating, work, parenting, and more, please submit your Strawberry Letter to steveharveyfm.com and click Submit Strawberry Letter. We could be reading your letter live on the air, just like we're going to read this one right here, right now. Buckle up. Hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is. Strawberry letter. All right. Subject, my husband's play daughter. Dear Stephen Shirley, I've been married for 10 years. We don't have any children together, but my husband has two grown kids and another play daughter. Yes, a play daughter. Before we got married, he had an ex-girlfriend and started dating her when her daughter was only two years old. So he became really close to the little girl. The girl even calls him daddy. When she was younger, he taught her how to ride a bike. They went bowling often, school shopping, and he would help her mom out financially with things the child needed. The play daughter started coming over to our house for visits about four years ago, and the first few visits were fine, but as she got older, she would go back to her mom and report what was going on in my house. I would get calls from the mom telling me that I was mean to her child and made her feel like I did not want her around. I have never been mean to this child, but I knew the moment I started telling her no, it was going to be a problem. I told my husband that it had become too much of a mess with the child's mom. Therefore, his play daughter was no longer welcome at our house. Now there's an ongoing battle with my husband and the play daughter's mother because she can't come over. My husband seems to think I'm wrong. I didn't ask him to cut all ties with the girl. I just don't want her staying overnight at my house. Deep down, I do want my husband to stop taking care of this child and cut off the mom completely, but I don't want to seem selfish. How can I get my husband to back away so we can stop all the drama in our marriage? Am I wrong in any way? I say no, you're not wrong. I mean, kids need to be told no. I will say that... um, You know, what your husband has done in this little girl's life is definitely commendable and respectable. He's not the girl's biological father, but he's known her since two years old. He's taught her how to ride a bike. I mean, he did all the things that a father would do. But now the situation is different. That is no longer, uh, her mom is no longer his girlfriend. They're no longer together. I say it's your house. It's your husband. The mom should be grateful. This mom should be grateful that you you welcome and you still welcome the daughter into your home at all. Because you certainly didn't have to do that. You, you didn't. I mean, you're being kind because... You know, of this of the uh, relationship the the your husband has with the girl. Uh, but I, I just have to say, where is he in all of this? I mean, his support and loyalty to be should be to you first and no one else. I mean, I, I don't understand how you're wrong in this to him. Uh, his so-called play daughter is out of line if she's going back, running back. Uh, telling her mom what's going on, uh, especially if all you're doing is telling her, no, you said in the letter you've never been mean to this child, so that's what I'm going with. 
um, it, it sounds like the daughter got this behavior. Sounds like she got it from her mama. I mean, I think your husband needs to check the mom. I, ne- I think he needs to check his play daughter. When she called you, the mom, uh, he should have just gotten on the phone and told her to, you know, stop talking to you like this. Don't be talking to his wife, you know, crazy and all of this. And, and, and to teach her daughter some respect in this situation. I mean, it's a different situation now. Uh, you're married. Uh, never, never should she be allowed to behave, you know, to you disrespectfully. And, and you know, you guys should be able to work on a, a good relationship. It sounds like you had that until she got older. And uh, you know what? I just think that's what a father would do. If it, No matter what, if it's a real father, if it's a play father, I think you need to step up and handle this situation. And don't let anyone disrespect your wife. Steve? Uh, Shirley, you're correct to an extent. But the question that the lady poses at the end of the letter, am I wrong in any way? Of course she is. Of course she's wrong. Because really, the whole purpose of this letter is, is because she hates the tie that this man has to the ex. And the fact that they've been married 10 years don't have any children together. Now the one child that keeps coming over here is a baby from the ex-girlfriend that he had when he was dating her and the daughter was two years old. That's what this letter is really about. So now, before we start dogging the man out saying what he ain't, let's just talk about what the man is for a moment. Here's a man who formed a relationship with a child because of his ex. Now, him and the ex ain't together, but he stayed close to the child because the child started calling him daddy. The little girl might not even know who her real father is, but this one right here calls him daddy. When she was younger, he taught her how to ride a bike. They went bowling often, school shopping. He would help her mom out financially with things that the child needed. The play daughter started coming over to our house to visit about four years ago. Now, I'm just doing the math. If they met the little baby when she was two, and she'd been coming over four years ago, and y'all been married 10 years, the little girl is somewhere between 6 and 10. 6 and 10. Somewhere like that. Now, she started coming over. The first few visits were fine. Just a few visits. You was able to take this for just a few visits. Then you said the first few visits were fine. But as she got older, she would go back to her mom and report what was going on in my house. I get calls from mom telling me I was mean to a child. Made it feel like she didn't want to run. All right, Steve, hang on. Hang on with your your response. She did. Uh, We'll have part two of your response coming up at 23 after the hour. The subject, my husband's play daughter, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve, let's recap today's Strawberry Letter subject, my husband's play daughter. Yeah, it's this woman been married 10 years uh, to her husband. They don't have any children. Uh, Your husband got two grown kids and another play daughter. Yes, a play daughter. See that? You see that sarcasm right there? Mm -hmm. That little sarcasm? Yes, a play daughter. Uh, Before we got married, he had an ex-girlfriend, started dating her, and the daughter was only two. He became really close to the little girl. The girl even calls him daddy. When she was younger, taught her how to ride a bike. They went bowling often, uh, school shopping, help her mom out financially with things that the child needed. Play daughter started coming over to our house for visits about four years ago. First few visits were fine. But as she got older, she would go back to her mom and report that I was, report what was going on in my house. I get calls from the mom telling me I was mean to her child and made her feel like she didn't want her around. Now, I think the the part that's true is that you've made the child feel like you don't want her around. 
And you know why I can believe that? Because you said at the end of your letter, I do want my husband to stop taking care of this child and cut off the mom completely, but I don't want to seem selfish. Now, help me understand. You want the man to cut the little girl off. Don't come over here no more. Don't be calling me daddy. Cut the mom off completely. Don't don't help this little child out no more. But I don't want to seem selfish. How can I get my husband to back away so we can stop all the drama in our marriage? Am I wrong in any way? Well, here's the part where you're wrong. The relationship with the child went on before you all got married. And before you all started dating. Because this was his girlfriend's two-year-old at the time. So this has been going on, and he's remained close in the girl's life, taught her how to ride a bike, take her to school, shop, and the little girl called him daddy. It ain't the little girl's fault. So now he just being a good dude. He giving a girl a child who may or may not know her father, but looks at him as her daddy, and they've had this ongoing relationship. You knew that when you married him. You thought you could deal with it, and you said it was cool, and then, but you said the first few visits were fine. Just a few now. That's you. That's about three. Mm-hmm. What is few? Mm-hmm. Few about three? Yeah, about three. Mm-hmm. But then she would tell her mom what's going on in my house because that's what kids do because mom's going to ask, what's the house like? Is she clean? Can she cook? Yeah, yeah. Then you get calls from the mom telling me that you was mean to her child and made her feel like you didn't want her to come around. And quite possibly could have, because I'm going to go back to the end of the letter. I do not want my husband. I do want my husband to stop taking care of this child and cut off the mom completely. But I don't want to seem selfish. Then you say, I've never been mean to this child. You ain't really been all that inviting. (laughs) But I knew the moment I started telling her, no, it was going to be a problem. I told my husband that it had become too much of a mess with this child's mom, therefore his play daughter was no longer welcome in our house. Wow, that's tough now. Cause remember this man had this relationship with this child before you all got married. He told you about it. He didn't spring it on you. He told you about it. He told you that he taught her how to ride a bike. He told you he used to take a school shopping to go bowling. He told you all this. You said, oh, that's sweet of you. I love you. Will you marry me? Yes. Girl, you have a problem with her? No. First few visits, you stomached it. What this letter is about is you hate the tie that he has to his ex and the memory that comes with the child that this is from his previous relationship. And I think it also plays in the fact that y'all don't have any children together. You stated that at the top. I've been married for 10 years. We don't have any children together. But no, I don't think the man is completely wrong. Now, I do agree with you where you said he should call his ex-girlfriend and say, hey, what you cannot do is call over here talking to my wife now. Right. Telling her how to be in her own house. That you cannot do. Because this is this woman's house. She Should he cut off ties with that little girl? I don't think that would be right. I just don't think it would be right. Man, how many times do men get beat up and ridiculed for not taking care of their child? Then a man come in and take care of some deadbeat dude that ain't doing nothing for his baby. He take on the role. And now they, they done fell in love with each other. Oh, I think it's a great thing. Uh, you're right that he's taking care of this young girl. I think that's a great thing. But she hates the fact that it's a play daughter. And the mother hates the fact that he married this woman instead of her. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> so the grown up is going to yes. mess up this child's relationship baby mama with drama. this man. Because it's the wife doesn't want the game drama. Playing. She doesn't want the drama. She don't want him taking care of this baby for this woman and they don't have a child together. That's what I think. All right. Well, we have to go. 
Uh, post your comments to today's Strawberry Letter on Instagram and Facebook at Steve Harvey FM. And check out the Strawberry Letter podcast on demand. Coming up at 46 minutes after the hour, former White House Press Secretary Sean Spicer was crying after uh, his Dancing with the Stars premiere. Did you see it? I with, saw that. With the green shirt on, the lime yeah. green shirt. <laughs> All right, we'll talk about it right after hey, this. Yeah, he crying for? You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. President Trump's former press secretary, Sean Spicer, cried after his big debut on season 28. It's been 28 seasons of Dancing with the Stars. Uh, Sean Spicer danced the salsa. And let's just say. It was bad. Yeah. Yeah, let's, yes. just say it. It. Yes. let's just say it. Yes. yes. All right. Uh, but afterwards, he was seen in his car crying, okay? But he says they were tears of joy. You know, people were thinking that he was crying and he was upset with his performance. But actually, he said they were tears of joy. He was happy his kids were watching him at home. Mm, one so of the kids called him mm. and told him to stop. <laughs> he says that um, he, he also thinks that Dancing with the Stars is a perfect platform to bring people together, no matter what their political beliefs are. Uh, meanwhile, Steve, Lamar Odom is also on the show. Uh, he danced and did the Foxtrot with his partner. Woo! That was something Ooh, to see. Mess. <laughs> Let's just say it, Junior. Let's just say it. It was bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, nobody dance on Dancing with the Stars? Nobody. Well, those two were the lowest, right? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, by the way, Sean Spicer's first day score was better than Lamar's just by one point. Uh, <laughs> Sean Spicer got 12. Lamar Lamar got 11. That's bad. Yeah. yeah. A- and uh, and Sean Spicer's green shirt was trending. Yeah. <laughs> it was really trending. With the um, puffy sleeves. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> I mean, you really can't talk down to me if you got a 12 and I got an 11. I know. What I you going to say about me? <laughs> But Sean Spicer got a lot of flack for just being on the show. I mean, he got, you know, people were not feeling him because they did not like him as press secretary. Mm. And, you know, all the controversy and everything. And now he's on Dancing with the Stars. At least he shows you that you can move on. Yeah. Life goes on. (laughs) Yeah. Uh Well, I don't see why that got something to do with him being on Dancing with the Stars. You know. Well, a lot of people just don't like him, Steve. They They just didn't like his meanness, his curtness, you know, when he was press secretary. Standing up there just out and out lying for the president. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold up, y'all. Uh-huh. Let's let's look That's at That's his job. That was his the job. The president <laughs> who lies every day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Whatever the press secretary say mm-hmm. on behalf of the president, mm-hmm. it's got to be a lie. <laughs> if he even just repeat what he said, right. it's a lie. But it's people lie. knew that, and, and Sean Spicer, you know, like the president, doubled down. So, But that's why I'm okay with him, because he quit. He just said, man, I can't do this. I can't keep yeah, lying. Can't. I can't come up here with yeah. all these lies. Yeah, it's too right much here. pressure. Mm-hmm. My kidney hurting. Yeah. Sarah Huckabee See, Sanders. Now, <laughs> the sad part, I t- she what quit. I, she, what I no. tell y'all. You said it. Mm-hmm. You did. She did quit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you said yeah. it. She's at so Fox go- now. She's at Fox News. Oh. All right, well, coming up at the top of the hour, Junior's here <laughs> with uh, his issues with football. <laughs> I can't keep watching these All right, <laughs> right after this. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, so Junior, what are your issues? I what is going, going on with you in football this season? We're not going to keep doing it. It's only two weeks in. We're What's not keep wrong now? I know, you're no, like, no, no because so first of all, the games are getting long, if y'all haven't noticed this. No, I haven't. The games are getting way <laughs> long now. They damn uh-huh. near like a job mm-hmm. watching a football game now. Like baseball? Yeah, it's getting real long now. Uh-huh. And it's because of these end zone celebrations. You know, oh. you know, you know, you know. Some of this mess don't need to be out here on the field. Mm-hmm. Some of y'all need to really be practicing. <laughs> now, 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 is it me or these touchdown celebrations didn't get out of hand? I mean, what happened to just scoring and giving the ball to the official? Yeah. Or, or, or even yeah. this back in the day. Remember the high, high five? They just mm-hmm. just jump and give mm-hmm. each other. High. Just do that. Let's move on. 
We ain't got to be down mm -hmm. there because now when somebody score, now it seemed like everybody on the team got to show up in the end zone to pop lock, <laughs> break dance. <laughs> everybody, 53 people pop locking. <laughs> the whole god dog on team is pop locking, I'm break dancing. Right they in here doing the Michael Jackson bad video. <laughs> I saw one team score a touchdown and did Jenny Jackson Rhythm Nation, the whole squad. <laughs> I, what the hell are we doing with the touchdown Five, four, celebration? Three, two, we don't need all this. All this chest bumping. And here's another thing that I really don't think we should what? be doing. What? Everybody can't what? jump in the stands because the people up there can't hold you. <laughs> they don't, the they don't work out. Yeah. You about to end your career, <laughs> break your ankle because a 10-year-old can't hold your big ass up. <laughs> <laughs> Just go and give somebody the ball. Okay. All right. Here's a new rule. We need to start this week. I'm with you. If you Ugh. score, then you mm. celebrate. Don't call nobody else down there. Okay. And uh -huh. you got five seconds. <laughs> One step, we need to move on. We're going to flag you. We're going to flag four, three, you. Three, two, one. And look here. And here's the last thing oh. I really want to say about what this, you, though, uh, if you're losing by 25, we don't need you to celebrate. Wow. If what? If you're losing by 25, <laughs> the, I don't even want to see your dance. What you right. need to do is get some more points on this field. Y'all getting y'all behinds whipped. What the hell does that mean if you pop lock and you still down by 30? Don't nobody care? Is, is Cleveland doing any of that? Oh, no. Nah, Cleveland uh, was happy. Just a little bit. They were happy. Oh. It ain't a lot. You uh, know, we just, we score. We damn near can't believe we down there. <laughs> It's no, different, ain't it's it? it's a shock thing. Yeah. <laughs> did, did I just go? Yeah. <laughs> what, did what anybody see it? Did anybody? <laughs> the whole city go crazy, uh -huh. but these celebrations. Are they clapping for me? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. How, is, why, how has it gotten so out of hand? That's the question. You don't, well, you they don't even. It, they brought it back. Yeah, you don't know who scored. It's too many people. Yeah, yeah. What number yeah. was that? <clears throat> that ain't here all doing the centipede. <laughs> Why is 10 people doing the centipede? <laughs> now, that's huh? visual right there. No, you got to throw people in the air, then catch them. No. No. I'm not catching you. And when did watches become part of football? Oh, I know. Oh. I didn't even know you could wear a watch on the football field. Uh-uh. uh, -uh. uh, -uh. We don't yeah. need that. Yeah. Keep your watch. You had a cold one on Sunday before the I game. I saw so. it, though. Uh, I saw but it. But won't it get broken or now, something? No, 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 no. No, he, Odell Beckham Jr. took it off for the game. Oh, thank you. Before Jesus. the game. Oh. He, he just wore it for warm-up. Uh -huh. He just wore it for warm-up. Oh. Uh -huh. Yeah. But mm -hmm. we already know what time it is. It's game time. <laughs> <laughs> Get up here, line up, catch this ball. <laughs> right. That's all. Yeah, you yeah. don't need to watch it. Damn, they got a big ass clock in yeah, every state. We know every one of them. <laughs> oh, we see it. Mm -hmm. oh, what is the it. purpose of the watch thing? What it was is that? fashion just, statement. He just wanted to do it. Uh -huh. Stunting. He's stunting. Yeah. Stunting. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I probably would have did it too. I'm just jealous. I don't have one. <laughs> I'm just going to admit I was hating. I was lying. That watch was cold. I just can't afford the damn thing. <laughs> And I saw it on him. I said, look at him. Going to show this in my face. Going to wear my blessing in my face. Wow. Wow. That's how you looked at that Yeah, game. that's how I looked at it. He going to wear my blessing right in my face. No damn well, Ooh, I can't that's pull a, one. That's, that's, that's another level of hating. Yeah. Uh, I know. Yeah, yeah I could have His one. watch is your blessing. <laughs> but I want you Ooh, to be happy some because right there. Yeah. You, you've been waiting for football so long. I have. And so the long. celebration just got out of control. Yeah. And that's he all. a little crying-ass football fan. <laughs> <laughs> Man. All right, coming up, more music and uh, some trending news on the Steve Harvey Morning Show. We'll be back in 20 minutes after the hour, right after this. One of them did the kings of comedy in his uh... <laughs> <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, uh, here's some news from our home station, Mix 92.3 in Detroit, of course. Uh, the strike against General Motors that's been going on, it continues as 55 factories and parts warehouses are at a standstill after the walkout by about 48,000 uh, United Auto Workers members. It's the union's first strike against the number one U.S. automaker, GM in over a decade, with auto workers joining the walkout over issues that include job security, pay, and medical coverage. All right. Is there a possibility for federal mediation if President Trump 
said it's possible if the company and union want it. Well, hopefully they'll be able to work out the GM strike quickly, Trump said before leaving the White House for New Mexico. Hopefully they're going to work it out quickly and solidly. That's what he said. Mm. So. And them auto workers get mad. They, they, they leave. Yeah. Well, well being a sad. former auto worker, a former union That's man. That's right. That's right. They're yeah. not walking out. Once you have a walkout, it's not for no reason. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's not for right. anything petty. And it's it's, it's mm-hmm. not for any reason that it. they got a big reason. It's mm-hmm. something going mm-hmm. really, really wrong for 48,000 people to walk off their job, mm-hmm. yeah. especially in this day and time. Oh, yeah. yeah. Job security, yeah. pay, and medical coverage. Those are their issues, so... Serious issues. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what we all want. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Hey, I hope they resolve it soon. Absolutely. Well, uh, more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show and some trending news coming up at 33 after the hour, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Some sad news. Uh, Jeopardy host Alex Trebek says he's undergoing chemotherapy again. This is after a setback in his battle with pancreatic cancer. During an interview with ABC's Good Morning America on Tuesday, Alex said that uh, after a short period of optimism when he stopped chemotherapy, his medical report didn't look good and doctors ordered him back on the treatment. Alex announced back in March that he had uh, stage four pancreatic cancer. We are all still praying for Alex Trebek, still praying and still being optimistic. Absolutely. That's right. Mm -hmm. Prayer Mm -hmm. warriors. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Prayer of healing. Yeah. Mm. (sighs) He has a great attitude too. He He got a good spirit. Like Jay. He and Jay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's how you, that's how you do it. That's how you beat it. Mm-hmm. And he said he asked for everybody's prayers too. Yeah, I he saw said that. I need them. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. Prayers going up for Alex Trebek. Yes, sir. And other trending news: um, a Texas judge has denied a motion by fired Dallas cop Amber Geiger to move her trial out of Dallas, rejecting her claims that the media's hysteria and false narratives uh, have prejudiced potential jurors in her trial for the shooting death of an unarmed black man in his own apartment. Dallas County District uh, Judge Tammy Kemp reportedly told jurors to pack one week's worth of clothing in case they are to be sequestered. Uh, The murder trial is expected to last up to Three weeks and will begin next Monday. Amber Geiger, 30, shot and killed uh, Botham Jean, Botham Jean, 26. He was an accountant. He was in his own apartment at the Southside Flats apartment complex just south of downtown Dallas on September 7th of, of last year. Geiger said she thought she had entered her own apartment and fired her service revolver at what she believed was an intruder. Uh, Geiger has been charged with murder and faces up to life in state prison if convicted. I, I, uh. Just you know, it's this is such an it's such an impossible story to believe that you thought yes. that you mm-hmm. were entering your own apartment when you were entering his apartment. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. kill the man, and now yes. you want what? Change what? a venue for yeah. the trial because the, trial. the no, media is being unfair. No, there's there's no unfair. Fair, nothing. This is what happened. Yeah. This man's right. life is gone because you, as a trained officer, mm-hmm. thought you were entering your house and he was an intruder when, in essence, you he opened the door to his own home and you killed him. Yeah. Are you kidding me? And don't man. you know your own house when you open yeah. the door? Man, yeah, miss me. Yeah. Yeah. Miss me. Yeah. You ain't seen yeah. nothing in the background look like right. yours. None. Yeah. N- right. Nothing. No, so the man. Judge denied yeah, denied it. Request. Yeah. All right, coming up, our last break of the day. And of course, some enlightening closing remarks from the one and only Steve Harvey right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, here we are, our last break of the day on this. It's been a good day. It's, it's been, great. yeah. 
it's been a really good day. We got through it, had some yes. fun. Um, Hump and now, day. Yeah. yeah. Hump day? Hump day. <laughs> that used to be Steve's <laughs> favorite commercial right you there. <laughs> <laughs> that camel. <laughs> All right, Steve, it's um, time for you to take us home with some of your closing remarks, as always. Uh, you know, uh, as, as I've decided to do a lot uh, since I came off my vacation, was to just try to share with you all a lot of things that I learned spiritually over my vacation. I, I said this is one of the most spiritual awakenings I've had uh, ever. And, and I really learned a lot spiritually. And I just wanted to share with y'all because there's so many people out there who love God. There's so many people out there who know God. And there's a lot of people out there that's, that's trying to figure out where God at. Is some people out there thinking God that forgot about them. And, I, you know, I just want to tell you something, that that's not true. God ain't forgot about you. Somebody said one time, I keep praying for something and it don't happen. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Did it, did it not happen the way you wanted it? Or it's not happening? Because usually it comes out to be not the way you want it. But if you look closely closely something is in the process of being worked out we just get impatient with the process how many times have i done that wanted something from god my way with and i was so focused on it happening my way that i didn't look around and realize he's actually operating and working something out and if i would just look closely and show a little bit more gratitude instead of complaining about what i don't have my way find out that his way is probably better than the one you got because see let, let me let, let me tell you what loses a lot of people you know when when things going really really good in your uh life and you feel like you're blessed then you just feel like god is smiling on you but then life happens you run into some rough patches on this journey you have to understand that when you hit rough patches in your life that God's still smiling on you. It's just that sometimes allowing these adversities that come into your life, some of, some of your verse adversities are allowed because it pulls you closer to God. Some of us need adversity to get closer to God. So, some of us don't understand that the adversities that we're facing in our life, sometimes they just... they. They seem they're covered in a mystery. But God, everything that happens to you, if you love God like so many of you do, if you want a relationship with God like so many of you do, it ends up working out for you one way or the other. You know, you might be asking God to save, make this man do right. Well, guess what? If the man is not right for you, why would God make him do right and he ain't the one for you? Sometimes, man, you got to go through some adversity because it pushes you closer to God. It's like the other day I was talking about people get mad at people because they go to jail and they find Christ. Whoa, hold up, partner. Partner. Key word, found Christ. What, what difference do it make how they found him? It, it, it's, it's not you can decide how God is found. I found God, I get <laughs> sad to say this, but but it's true. I, I get pushed closer to God when I get in the most trouble. Sad to say, but that's what's happened. I'm just now learning to stay close to him in the good times. So when the bad times come, I ain't that far away. I had to make that decision myself. So when you see God in the good times, you also got to see God's face in the hard times because this too shall pass. You're just going through a process. Everybody's life has to have adversity in it so you can appreciate the good times. You got to have adversity because it makes you draw closer to God. You got to have adversity because you need to become experienced at what it is you're going through so when it happens to you again, you know how to handle it better. Because it's called life. It's just going to keep happening. And see, a lot of times, man, 
people, they look at things so wrong. You know, people get in their life, they get real busy bustling around and they're trying to accomplish things through your own strength and your own ability. Well, let me tell you something about when you accomplish something through your own strength and ability. Sometimes you succeed rather well and other times you fail. But you don't want to miss what life is really about. And that's having a collaboration with God, man. You want to have a relationship with God so you don't get so full of yourself like all your blessings is because of something you did. You ain't did nothing. Oh, you might have worked hard, but you can't make blessings come your way. Do you know if you had the ability to do this, you know what your life would look like? And quit looking at other people and talking about, man, God, are you doing something for them? Man, I don't get this, and I sometimes I wanted this, and I get this. It's called favor. Favor ain't fair. Favor's not giving out. Say favor's giving it out just because God is good. We have all benefited from favor. If we've all received favor, we had no business getting. That's what grace and favor is, man. Y'all come on. So I'm just trying to get y'all to just think about it, man. Form a relationship with God, man. It really wants me to tell you that. Y'all have a great weekend, okay? We're getting close to it. Have one. For all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary, void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 